What's up everyone, Art here with No Code Devs. And today we're gonna build a Hacker News style website like this. We're gonna do this completely without code. And I'm gonna show you how to automate the content into your site so that you can focus on things like marketing, selling sponsorships and ads. I'm gonna show you how to customize some of the settings of the site and the different pre-configure options that you have, including setting up Stripe for payments, comments, and again, pulling in content automatically placing it into buckets, depending on the type of site that you're creating. Super exciting. By the end of this, you could have a working Hacker News website clone. Let's dive in. And again, if you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and dive in and show you how we build this Hacker News clone. I recently built this site called AI Hackers. As you can see, very Hacker News style. I'm gonna walk you through how I did this from scratch. So we're gonna start at a site called Feedly, feedly.com. Feedly is just a way to aggregate and curate and collect articles from the internet. For today's example, I'm gonna build a sports site that keeps track of happenings across different sports in the sports industry at large. So what I've done is I've logged into my Feedly account. I've clicked on this button here that says follow websites, Twitter, Reddit, newsletters, etc., And I've just searched in this box here for sports. And if you had specific blogs or sports websites that you follow, of course you could follow those individually. But when I type in sports, they have some top sports websites like Deadspin and ESPN, but they also have this sports starter kit, which has like a list of 10 different sites that the Feedly people have determined these are popular sports blogs. So you could just follow them all at once. So this is perfect for example, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit follow all. Now, we can put these inside an existing folder. I have a bunch of folders set up, but I'm gonna create a new folder and I will call it sports. We will see here on the left-hand side now, we have this folder called sports. And within the folder, we have all these different individual sort of content sites that are populating data for our sports site. There's already 56 articles here right at the beginning, which is great. Again, you can continue to add individual sources to this folder. If I were to come back here to sports, and say I wanna follow the Sky Sport News, I can just hit follow and add it to my sports folder. So over time, you can continue to add data points to your content sources. Once you have this set up, we're gonna go ahead and move on over to zapier.com. Uh, Zapier is just an automation tool to create a feed so that we can then take this data and pull it into our Hacker News to style site programmatically without having to update our site manually every day. Of course, you'll also be able to add, site, add content to your site manually, but this will give it a nice base amount of information without having us have to do everything, anything every single day. So first step here is to trigger. We're gonna go ahead and search for Feedly. And what do we want to do? So there's all these different options here new article in AI feed, new article on board. There's a ton of different options, but we wanna do new article in folder. So if you remember, we set up this folder. So anytime a new article pops into this folder, we're gonna to want to have this automation trigger. So let's go ahead and choose that and click continue. We have to connect our account. This is our no code devs account. Just go through the steps here, hit continue. And now we have to choose which folder. As you remember, we just created this folder called sports. So it should show up here. Here it is. Click sports and go ahead and click continue. Now there's this test trigger button, which just essentially is testing this to make sure that it's able to find something in this folder in this instance. So let's go ahead and hit that and it should find some sample content. Here we go. So found this article here from bizjournals.com. The name of the article here is Noggin Boss gets NFL license for its novelty oversized ball caps. Okay, so you got all this information, you even have content summary, you have the article URL, you have the category that's in, the feed that's in, so you get all this information. One thing I wanna point out here is that if you maybe wanted to trim down the number of articles that you're pulling in, rather than having it be a new article and folder, you could choose new popular article and folder, and this uses Feedly's algorithm to determine which articles are popular. So you're only sharing the best content. This might be an option for you if you have a ton of articles coming in and you really wanna trim it down to only share the most interesting content. But for the sake of example today, we'll just use new article in folder. So the next thing that we wanna do is choose our action step. And we're actually gonna create an RSS feed here using Zapier so that we have our own RSS feed that's like a blended RSS feed 
of these multiple feeds that we're watching. So what we want to do is we want to create an item in feed, hit continue, and here we go. We have our URL. We'll just call this sports. The feed title, we'll call this sports. That's fine. You can choose whatever you want. Max records, we'll keep this at 50. So the item title, we're going to actually use the article title for our item title. And in the source URL, we're going to delete this and use our article URL as the source URL. Because ultimately, what we want people to do if we hop over to our built site here is when they click a link, we want them to go out to that actual article URL. So that's why we're going to put the article URL, our URL here, excuse me. And then finally, we want we need to have some sort of content in our RSS feed. What I usually choose here is the article summary with no HTML. So this gives you a nice little summary of the article in this content for your RSS feed. There's all kinds of other fields you can fill out, like author name, author email, author link. You can actually grab these from Feedly. For the sake of time here, I'm not going to fill these out, but you can fill all that out so that your RSS feed has more information in it if you would like. Go ahead and hit continue, and we're going to test our action here. Over here, it looks like it was successful. So we got this running. We're going to rename this app to, let's say, Sports Demo. Okay. And we can hit publish here. This is going to publish our Zap. And we can actually see our feed URL here is zapier.com slash engine slash RSS and then this string and then slash sports. So if we copy this here, we can go to a new tab, paste this, and we can see that our one article is already here. Now, every time a new article is found in this folder, it's actually going to fire this zap new article in folder and add or append an article to our RSS feed. So without us doing anything, we're monitoring the web across these 10 different blogs for sports articles. And anytime something new comes in, it's adding it as an item to our RSS feed. So we have our content engine already pre-built. Of course, this is an oversimplification of an example, but it gives you an idea of how quickly you can build these sort of like content mashups for whatever niche that you would want to be creating your hacker news style site in. So. Now that we've done all of that, I'm going to swap over now to another tool, which will actually allow us to spin up our own Hacker News style site without using any code. So let me show you how you do that. Okay, so here we are. We're actually at HN plus. This is a gem, something that I found recently that allows you to build your own Hacker News completely on your own without of course, writing any code. This really simplifies the process of getting your site set up. If you were to code this yourself, it would be quite complex of a project. Not only does it have a lot of the features that Hacker News has, including their similar like algorithm, but there's all kinds of other things like notification settings, categories, tags, and drafts. You can make the site private. You have all kinds of different roles of permissions. They have an API, they have integrations, built-in newsletters. There is a ton here, including monetization out of the box. So really excited about this tool. I was able to spin up AI hackers in just about a day. Really the, the possibilities are endless here with what you could do, but I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. I already have an account. You actually can create a site for free and their plans are very reasonably priced. We could take a look at that, but you can create a site basically for free and then only pay for features that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new site and I'll call this sports feed. And hit let's go. So check this out. We are immediately brought into our dashboard our site is set up here. It's actually gonna look like a hacker news site, sports feed, there's no content there yet, of course, but our site is completely set up for us, which is super cool. In our dashboard here, there's a lot that we can do. We probably won't get into everything, but you can set up custom links, custom pages. You can see all of your posts, which would show up here. You can moderate comments. You can have control over your category. If you wanted a category for people to ask questions or a jobs word, you could certainly do that. I'll actually delete these out. So we just have one category here, which is show, which is basically where people show things that they're interested in. So your members can submit content to the site if they find an interesting article like Hacker News. But for sports, in this case, you can set up different tags if you want. Um, we probably won't do that for this example, but you can add tags to your site. You can see your members. There's just one member here, which is me. You can set up different roles that have with different permissions, which is super cool. You can see your newsletter subscribers. Here's where you set up your monetization. So you can add your Stripe API key. It's super simple. And then once you've done that, you can have paid memberships and also promoted posts. 
I'm not going to put in my Stripe, Stripe API key for this demo, but it's super simple. You just grab it from Stripe. Once you put it in, you can actually set the price for a promoted post. Someone can submit a post, pay for it to be promoted, and it'll stick to the top of the homepage for the dates that they've selected, and it'll auto charge them based on the dates that they chose. Super cool. You can also drag in like Google AdSense, code snippets and things like that. So you can monetize your site that way. So a ton of monetization options. I just wanted to walk through some of the things that you could do here with this HN plus software that we're using to build our Hacker News site. But let's get into it here. This is our content. If we look in our content, there's a bunch of settings here. If it URL, a post is URL based, open in a new tab. Yes, we're gonna wanna do that because most of our content is gonna be brought in through our RSS feed that we just created. Convert image URLs into tags, sure. Convert YouTube URLs into embedded videos, sure. Let's go ahead and do all of that. Go ahead and click save. Submission, you can control a lot of the things here, like submitted posts must be approved. We'll just say no. Allow members to use ChatGPT and run your post. Super cool, you can turn this on. They actually use their own open AI ID or key rather than ours. And there's a ton of settings here. I'm not gonna go through all of them. You can allow tags, show tags on the homepage, et cetera, et cetera. Allow comments. And here, this is a important tab here for us. This is content sources. Do we wanna enable content sources? Yes. What does this do? This is allows us to bring in content automatically or programmatically through sources. When we click this, yes, you'll see this content sources actually shows up here. So we're gonna go ahead and click that now. Now that we have a new source, or now that we have content sources turned on, rather, we can hit new source and check this out. It's super simple. All you need is your RSS feed URL, which category it's going to fall in and then tag. So I'm going to hop over here, grab this URL that we just created, come back here, and I'm going to paste it in. The category, if you leave the category blank, it actually just shows, let me find my site here, AI Hackers. It actually just shows uncategorized versus... This is one that was submitted in the show category. I like that because it's coming from the system, but you can definitely pre-categorize things if you want, which is really cool. So you could set up a bunch of different feeds. Let's say you were watching like American football, European soccer and cricket. You could actually set up different Zapier feeds for those sports and then pre-bring them in into categories within your site so that it's auto-categorizing posts depending on sort of the content which it aligns with, which is super cool. You can also, we don't have any tags, but if you had tags, you could pre-tag posts here to make things easier to find. So ton of really cool features that can you just set once and then forget about so that your content is auto-categorized. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and check this out. Your data source will be processed shortly. It'll also be processed on a regular interval throughout the day. I looked into this. It comes in approximately two to three times per day. So if you're monitoring a bunch of feeds, just know that your site will update with that content from the feeds about two to three times a day. If they want to manage the load on their servers, that's why it's not constantly pulling these RSS feeds. But a couple of times a day, your site will update. I will show you there's a way to also manually update and submit posts, of course. So you can do that as well if you don't want to wait for the RSS feeds to propagate. Okay, so let's go ahead and say got it. And as we can see, we can keep track of what's brought, been brought in at this exact moment. No, no posts have been brought in, but sometime today, this would be updated with any items that are in this RSS feed here that we created through Zapier. Hopping back here, I just want to show you a couple other things that we can do. We can, as we went through, we can control the content, but we can also change the design. So you can change some basic things like font, font size, that kind of thing. You can change all the different colors of the different elements on the site, and you can even embed or add, I should say, your own custom CSS if you want. So there's a ton of customization options you can do to make it your own. As you can see, I've changed mine on this site to be this black text theme with a white background, pretty basic, but you could change the colors up to be completely however you want them to be. Also here, custom domain. You need to have a paid plan for a for custom domain. Their plans are super reasonable, up to 100 members, six dollars a month, pitched 50,000 page views, so you can get started with your own domain for six dollars a month and this also has integrations enabled which is super cool let's go down here to a couple other things i just want to show you integrations there's integrations with discord hubspot talk slack super cool lots you can do there i'm not going to go into that too much this is a nice feature here so when a member signs up their notifications can be configured here so email member when another member comments on their post we probably want to do that to keep up engagement 
when a new member signs up, their default newsletter frequency. So we could set this to daily if we want. I don't think we have the newsletter turned on. Maybe that's why. I'll check that in a second. We can enable avatar images. If we come back here, you'll see what that looks like. Taylor here on our team has submitted an article to Hacker News and her avatar image comes in because she's authenticated through Google. Super cool. Prompt member to film, profile and sign up and allow members to invite editors. So you can change all these settings here. Newsletter, so then site newsletter is off. If we turn this on, you can actually use your own newsletter service if you want, or you can have this site's newsletter service automatically sent for you. So we just keep it as a default here. I'll go back one to the newsletter. Now we can, as you can see, adjust the newsletter settings. So super cool. SEO settings, you can add in some basic SEO information like your meta tags and your keywords, look at your site map, your site profile, you can add the name, the tagline, site logo, favicon, contact email, date format, site branding, you can even put some custom site branding down there and there is translation. So you can change all of the, all of the words on your site to your own sort of language if you would like or your own branding. So super cool. You can customize everything here and really make it your own. Now, there's a couple other things I wanna show you. If we go out to the live site that are worth showing here. So look at this, our piece of content is already on this site, really cool. So it, it updated here while we were talking. You can discuss, you can post comments here. So any member of the site can post comments, but there's also some other cool things here. The RSS feed, so you can get RS feed now for this site, but you can also use this option called bookmarklet to add content. So if we click this, basically just a bookmarklet that allows you to, it allows you or your members to add content to the site. We can click this. Actually, what you do is you drag it. I don't have my bookmarks bar turned on because I'm doing this tutorial, but basically you drag this into your bookmarks bar. And then if you're on any website with some sort of news article, you can actually just click that and it'll auto add the post to your site, which is super cool. If we go back here a level and we click submit, this is basically where it takes you whenever you use the bookmarklet, except it pre-fills this information. So let me show you how easy it is to actually submit a post to. So if we come out here and we go to Sky News Sports, here's a bunch of different articles. Let me just click this one and I can just copy this URL, come back here, sorry, submit an article. Here's the URL category. We're not going to choose a category. The title of the article uh, in this example was, we can make it whatever we want, but we'll just say, we'll just take the whole thing, hit copy. I lost it here. Oh, here it is. Put the title. Cause I'm the admin. I can choose to pin this post to the top. This would not be shown to your regular users. And you can add poll options here. Now, if you had paid or pinned post or promoted post, turned on, you would actually see an option to pay here as well. We haven't done that. We have an integrated stripe, but I can go ahead and hit submit. And there we go. This article has now been added. The member experience is exactly the same as the admin experience, except you can't pin post, but members can come in, they can sign up, they can add content, and then other users can upvote, comment, discuss. Basically the same experience as Hacker News. If I come back down here, just want to show you something else. I just have to find it here. But basically I want to show you, you can actually allow Google authentication so members can sign up with their Google account versus just like creating an account with an email, which makes it really easy to sign up. This is an access here. So allow members to register with the third, following third party accounts, Google. Yes, remember an account must, members must verify email. You might want to turn this on for security and you can make your site public or private. So if I hit save here, I can come back that back out to sports feed. If I log out, oh, I think my cookies are sticking here, but okay, if I log out and now if I wanna register, now I can sign in with Google. You can even choose free or paid. I don't think the pay to work because we haven't configured Stripe, but you see how easily that works. Again, there's not a lot of visual sort of aesthetics to this, but that's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like Hacker News. It's supposed to be, it's intentionally simple. It's really easy to set up the site. As you can see, we've done this in just about 20 minutes. And if I come back in a few hours, there'll be a ton more content on the site and it's happening automatically so that you can just focus on your marketing. You can focus on securing advertising and everything like that. Hope this was really helpful for you. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe it. And thank you for subscribing to No Code Devs.